Your server is nothing without the network. One of the first things you'll want to do when you get your Proxmox server installed and running is make sure that you have the network configured the way you think it should be. Now, right now I'm going to give you the basic network overview, um, really focusing on two things, command line configuration and GUI configuration and give you a sense of what's possible, right? So hang with me. We're going to go over to the Proxmox GUI. We're logged in. Right now we're looking at the data center perspective, which uh, as of right now, we only have one server installed, and that is our server called Proxmox. So I'm going to click on that server, and immediately you can see all of the options change. Instead of being kind of global options for the whole data center, we're going to move into the options for that specific server. And right underneath the system section is the network. Now, this is going to display all of the different devices that are available as network devices on your server. Now, you can see that on, on, on this list, as I, as I as flip it to me, right? On this list, there's actually four of them that are built into the server itself. EN0 or EN0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and that is Proxmox naming convention. If I were to zoom over to the server itself, now I've, I've taken the server out of here into, uh, into the other room, I'm going to do something crazy. Hang on. Let me show you this. Oh, man. So, so I actually have two of these servers. One I put in the other room because it was so loud. This is the one I have yet to configure. This will be our cluster uh, number two. You can see that this guy has four built-in network cards, right, into the, to, to the motherboard itself of this server. Now, I also installed on the one, and I haven't installed it on the one I just showed you yet, but on the one that I uh, moved into the other room, here I am, uh, I installed a 10 gigabit per second network card that actually has two individual interfaces on it, this one and this one. Now, when you first install it, I always plug it straight into the first network card. That's in, in my case, that was a one gigabit per second network card. And during the installation, it had me set the IP address. Now, you may have seen earlier that I, I randomly chose one that was already in use in my network and I had to manually change it from the screen. Now, now that we're here, we can do that from the interface, right? I can double click on this Linux bridge. Ooh, 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 huge, huge point right here. This is the bridge interface. Now, when this first came uh, configured, I, I, what, what am I trying to say? The default configuration of Proxmox, right? Only had EN01 under here. Only had, whoop, as, as, I, as I goof it up right there. Only had the first interface as the bridge port. I went in and added this one, which is the 10 gigabit per second interface. Now, you might look at that and be like, okay, why, Jeremy? Why is this one called EN01? I got to stop dragging that. Why is this called EN01 and the other one's called ENPC? It's, it's simply because Proxmox uses different, we'll just call it system components of Debian, Linux, to control those. That's just the naming convention. You can, if you, if you go in and, and type this into Google, you'll actually see why everything's called what it's called, right? It, it has to do with the hexadecimal identification of the network card, what slot it's in, what interface it is on that network card. So, so you, can, you can go into that, but in a nutshell, it's just going to show up right here. Now, this interface is a bridge interface, VM BR0. And I want to make sure you understand it is a bridge in two ways. One, you can actually bridge the physical interfaces of your server into this, this, this single logical interface. And, and that's what I did. When I went in and I added ENP66, I added essentially the 10 gig uh, interface, the, the, the interface one essentially on there. I bridged those together. Now, that's kind of dangerous because... If you plug both those interfaces in, you could have duplicate IP addresses and that kind of thing. It essentially makes it kind of like a switch, right? But that's the, that's the second way that this is a bridge. It's a bridge not only, or, or could be a bridge for not only the physical interfaces that you have on here, but also the VMs, the virtual machines that you will eventually run in, in this world, right? So, so all of them will be able to access the network through this bridge interface. You have the ability to go in and create additional bridge interfaces. You have the ability to bond network cards together. You have the ability to, to, uh, to link them to where, where uh, and that's, that's what a bond is, is where you have multiple, you know, two, four, eight interfaces acting as one and giving yourself more bandwidth, more resiliency, redundancy of, of having those, right? You can configure all of those, but the, the only thing I want to show you in here 
Yeah, I know I'm talking a lot on here. There's just a lot to think about when you're, you're doing this. I want to show you that you can change your server's IP address right here. And you can change it through the shell interface. Now you can do that either, you know, going directly to the server like I did when I, when I goofed up the IP address because I couldn't access it remotely. I was like, ah. So, so I had to go to the, the, the console and plug it in. Or if you have like a DRAC card or something that allows you to remotely access the console of the server, you can do that. But the great thing about this is I could go in here and again use Nano. That's a nice little text editor. Or, or you can use VI or whatever you want to use. Uh, Nano is just uh, very user friendly. Uh, nano forward slash etc forward slash network forward slash interfaces and again this is uh, Debian's network configuration which is what Proxmox runs on unless you've built it on your own machine right you can modify things here and and you know there are, you'll find plenty of instructions online on how to do that or you can use the GUI which actually modifies this for you the big thing that I want to tell you I'm gonna hit Control X and get out of here right Bam, out the big thing I want to make sure you understand. Proxmox will make you reboot after you change the network configurations. Now, now you can, if, if you want to, my, my phone's digging, hang on. Uh, you can, if you want to, uh, go and turn the interface off and turn it back on. But often, if you're remote, that, that'll cut off your access, right? Um, you can also install other utilities like uh, IF Up Down 2, which allows you to do restarts of the network interface. But in its native sense, Proxmox says once you once you change the IP, you need to reboot the server, which is a pain, especially in a production environment, right? And that's the the, the good news is that you don't usually do that. You know, you can you you uh, set the IP configuration initially once, and unless you're doing some major maintenance or you're doing things like VLAN modification, which usually involves you know changing, rebooting things like that, um, you it's it stays stable, tried and true. But that's it. Two ways that you can modify the network configuration. One, through the GUI. This is the GUI way of doing it. And you can also get into some of the advanced networking. Or two, through the CLI, which, which is uh, by editing that single text file. That will configure a network. It's that simple.